Once upon a time I had this crazy idea. I thought, what if there's a shape which is made up exclusively of squares and pentagons, starting with four pentagons around a square? They couldn't find anything like it on the internet, and the world was acting like it's so non-existent that I shouldn't even bother. So I created my own net for one, or at least part of one, to make. I printed it out. I cut it out, leaving some tabs there to glue it together. I folded the tabs and the polygons ready, then glued it together, and voila! It was kind of an open shape. Maybe it would loop around if it continued, if you continued adding squares and pentagons. I don't think mathematicians have ever bothered yet, even though they consider self-intersecting polyhedra to be a thing. Maybe other shapes like 11 pointed stars, 5.5 guns, or perhaps you could call them pentasemigons, and others like that can self-intersect and go around maybe in a strange balloony shape that goes through itself a few times. A bit like the Kepler points at concave regular polyhedra, but that's a different story. You would think mathematicians have it all figured out. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. I can't seem to find any proof that they have tried, though. It's such an open-ended subject. Anyway, I made this strange open shape. Clearly something was wrong with the top. It could use kites at the top, like a special kind of gem shape. A squentahedron, or tetrapentahedron. It has nine sides, which is four tetra plus five penta. Also, that would make it a type of nonahedron, nine-faced 3D shape. Maybe it's related to its non-existence. I wanted to make one on Blender. I had made a square with pentagons on the sides ready there. So I looked up polyhedron angles to find out how much I would have to turn the pentagons upwards so that they would fit together. But then I realised that this had never been done before, apparently, so I would have to work it out all by myself using trigonometry. Here's the start of my working. I know the internal angles of a pentagon are 108 degrees, so they're 72 degrees from the square's edge. If I fold them around a square, that 72 degrees will turn to 45 degrees if you look at it from above. So the horizontal distances will be the same as if I had squashed the pentagon until its sides were 45 degrees. Then, because the actual distances haven't changed, I can use that to find the angle of the pentagon and to fold it up. That turned out to be that you have to turn the pentagon on its side by 71.03929 degrees, which you might be able to see among all this gobbledygook that I wrote. The five significant figures which Blender uses. Then I wanted to know the angle that the top square would make if it corresponds to the top pentagon worked out as 34.49379 degrees. Finally, I wanted to find the height that the top of the kites would be if I drew kites on the top instead of squares. Just extended the corners of the top squares so that they touched into a point while keeping a flat surface. I'm not sure if I got mixed up with the equations a little this time, but I got a value of 0.68712 from some point. If the sides are all length 1, which I've been using, makes the calculations so much easier. This seemed to fit quite nicely once I figured out what I was doing. 
plugged all the numbers into Blender, and here are the results. This is what our squentahedral nonahedron looks like from above. And this is what it looks like from below. Now, when I get a girlfriend, maybe I'll get a jewel cut for her in this shape. My shape.